Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline the nation, we running the game. Headliner Nation, what is going on? It's that time of the week where we dive into our rankings before kickoff on Thursday night football, or depending on when you watch these, it could be before Sunday. Who knows? But we drop them on Thursdays, and it is time to talk about wide receivers and tight ends. And don't forget, last week, I did you all a solid top 50 wide receivers moving forward, and we've got 50 more for you today, plus my top 20 tight end hey but don't forget if you're looking for a way to support the channel and get some extra content some stuff for you you can do that now down below the video next to the subscribe button there is a join button if you click on that button $4.99 a month join our membership here on youtube you're going to get an extra live stream on sunday mornings only for members you're going to get extra content throughout the week that is only for members and you're gonna get some sweet stuff as well. Some emojis that you can use in the in the chat and the badge next to your name. It's a great way to stand out and show that you are an exclusive member of the Headliner Nation. But enough of that. We gotta roll, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to talk about our ranking. So let's jump straight into it. And we're gonna go with our wide receivers first. First and foremost, we got to go with Devontae Adams at number one this week, going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that has allowed a ton of fantasy points per game. We have got to roll with him in a really, really nice matchup. Cooper Cup at number two. The connection between him and Stafford is too strong. Not not to have up this high. Tyreek Hill at number three, hopefully a bounce back week, maybe adding Josh Gordon. And again, I don't know if Josh Gordon's even going to be on the field this week, but maybe adding adding Josh Gordon gives a little bit more credit to the other side of the field and, and opens up Tyreek Hill a little bit more. Stefan Diggs at number four, going up against Houston. He's still getting the most targets on this team. I did talk about it the other day, though. Emmanuel Sanders, this dude, no, oh, he's playing so well right now. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Calvin Ridley at number five going up against Washington. Washington, a team that surprisingly enough has allowed a lot of fantasy points to wide receivers this year. Calvin Ridley in a good spot. Chris Godwin coming in at number six. He's kind of been the main consistent guy, and I definitely think Tom Brady's going to ball out in New, uh, in New England this week, and I definitely expect everybody, including Antonio Brown, to get on, uh, get on board with that, but Chris Godwin's been the most consistent guy so far, so I'm going to continue to have him the highest, and we'll talk about Antonio Brown in a minute. Mike Williams at number seven. Love what they're doing with Mike Williams right now. I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I showed you in a video last week, too. This is a guy that is not just streaking down the field anymore. He is running all the routes in the route tree, and he is winning all over the field. C.D. Lamb at number eight against Carolina, looking for a bounce back week and what could be a just a back and forth performance here between these two teams. Terry McLaurin at number nine, going up against Atlanta. I would expect uh, I would expect Tyler Hankey to kind of get back uh, get back to Terry McLaurin. Not a great week last week. But two weeks ago against the Giants, Terry was on fire, expected against Atlanta as well. Odell Beckham Jr. is making it up to number 10. Right now, Minnesota giving up a ton of fantasy points, a ton of receiving yards, two opposing wide receivers. I expect Baker Mayfield to be looking his way early and often. Justin Jefferson at number 11. Now his matchup going up against, there's the hiccups. I've been doing this during my video. Somebody pointed it out earlier too. I keep getting the hiccups during my videos, maybe because it's I'm talking too fast. But Justin Jefferson at number 11 going up against Cleveland. This is a much tougher matchup. Cleveland, yeah, you could say some of their, man. I mean, obviously week one, I mean, they had Kansas City, but, um, you know, they've been... They've been containing big pass plays. And obviously last week um, was just a cluster for the Chicago Bears. But Cleveland's getting after the quarterback. They're getting a lot better in pass protection. They're doing a lot of good things. I just expect a little bit of a lower ceiling this week for Justin Jefferson. DK Metcalf broke out again last week, finally looking like him himself. He gets San Francisco this week. Debo Samuel at number 13 going up against Seattle. Still the number one target in this offense. Ten targets led the team last week. DeAndre Hopkins at number 14. The reason I've got him lower is because, number one, he's going up against Jalen Ramsey. And number two, we don't know what his health status yet at this point. So as, 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 until we hear more, I don't know. The reason I'm putting here in my rankings, because I'm kind of showing you where I think that ceiling is at this week. If he does play, 
He is going to probably be right around 14 for me because it's a tough matchup and he's been banged up, okay? So I think 14 is about his ceiling. Uh, at number 15, Amari Cooper going up against Carolina. Expect him to bounce back as well. A lot of running the ball, but I don't expect... Carolina is really, really good against the tight end. I'm expecting the Dallas Cowboys to get back to Cooper and Lamb. And I'm feeling at number 16, kind of mentioned it against Cleveland. Cleveland's been good against the pass this year. I think Adam Thielen is going to have a little bit of trouble, but he's just, I mean, he's a sucker for the end zone, right? He's always down there, and that's why you still got to keep him in the top 20. Tyler Lockett at number 17, a little bit of a drop off here for him, but like we saw, right? Like we saw last week, he's going to be like this. San Francisco, again, it's going to be a little bit of a tougher matchup. Aaron Rodgers did well against him last week, but... You know, Marquez Valdez Scantling, who's kind of like that big play guy, like he didn't even, I mean, he had some he had some good catches, right? But it wasn't like we saw huge plays from him. So going up against San Francisco, I expect them to try and limit the big plays, which would be Lockett. DK may end up eating over him instead. Jamar Chase at number 18. We got to go with Jamar Chase at 18. As of right now, we could change that. It sounds like Higgins is going to be out, but I don't know that for sure as of this recording. So I'm going to have him about here, but honestly, his upside could take him as high as maybe 14 or 13. It is Thursday Night Football. It is Jacksonville. If they get way out ahead, more than likely, he will you know, see at least a big play here or there, but maybe all the volume for him to be higher won't. Keenan Allen at number 19, we've kind of seen kind of a role reversal. So Mike Williams was the big play guy. Keenan Allen was more consistent. Keenan Allen's had some bigger plays, and Mike Williams has been more consistent this year. Going up against Las Vegas on Monday night, I expect Mike Williams to eat again. Uh, but Keenan Allen, for me, just lacking a little bit of that upside right now. But you're not sitting him. You're still playing him. He's a solid, in my opinion, wide receiver two right now. He's coming in at wide receiver 15. If he starts scoring more, will be great. But Mike Williams is just unstoppable in the end zone right now. DJ Moore at number 20. Listen, Diggs has been absolutely fantastic. And that is who is going to be on DJ Moore this week for the Dallas Cowboys. He has been shutting people down. He's been a ball hawk. I mean, the dude has been absolutely fabulous. Big props to him. I think he limits DJ Moore this week. Antonio Brown at number 21. Right before I recorded this video, it sounded like that he is, even though he didn't practice on Wednesday, he's coming off the COVID list on Thursday and will practice on Thursday. And I've got Mike Evans right behind him at number 22. I think these guys will be next and neck. Obviously with Antonio Brown, if he had been fully healthy, I would have him higher up because I would expect him and Brady to want to stick it to New England a little bit. But because he has been out, because I don't know I don't know all the symptoms, I don't know how sick he's been, I don't know um, if he's going to take a little bit of time to get back, those things, I'm just going to have him a little bit lower this week. And plus, don't forget, Rob Gronkowski is going to go off. At number 23, Julio Jones. Julio Jones, as of right now, I believe is listed as questionable, but it feels to me more like doubtful. Based on the article I read a little bit ago, uh, Julio Jones and Antonio, or, uh, not Antonio Brown, AJ Brown are both trending towards not playing this week. So obviously, Julio Jones, right now I've got him lower up against the New York Jets because I expect a huge <laughs> Derrick Henry week. And if for some reason he is banged up, maybe they just don't play him as much because it's the New York Jets. I mean, Tennessee should win this. Jacoby Myers at number 24 going up against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay has allowed the most reset or excuse me, has allowed the most fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. Uh, and they're allowing a lot of touchdowns and they're allowing, allowing a lot of yards. Basically, wide receivers have run all over them. Jacoby Myers, tons and tons of targets so far this season. I'm expecting more this week. Allen Robinson at number 25. Got him a little bit lower. Why? Because I don't know who the quarterback is this week. But Allen Robinson, come on. He's going to bounce back sooner or, sooner or later, right? Juju at number 26. Right now, he's a did not participate in practice. Based on what I heard with the ribs, I think he will be good to go by, uh, by Sunday. But... I don't know for sure, so I'm just going to hold back a little bit with the ranking right now and see what happens. Uh, at number 27, Cortland Sutton going up against Baltimore. Uh, you know, Baltimore, yeah, they've they've suffered some injuries in the secondary, and it's been a little bit spotty, but it could still end up being a tough matchup. Cortland Sutton, huge week a couple of weeks ago, kind of falls back to earth this week, but I think I think upside, touchdown upside this week is with Tim Patrick. Marquez Valdez-Scantling at number 28. Aaron Rodgers has basically said, you're number two on this team in targets right now. Number three, if you want to throw Aaron Jones in 
there. But Marquez Valdez Scantling is really starting to come into his own. It feels like Aaron Rodgers is starting to trust him, and you could see that over the last two weeks. Again, I don't know how many times I could say this. Aaron Rodgers messed up two weeks ago, or MVS would have had back-to-back ex- uh, outstanding weeks. Number 29, Chase Claypool going up against Green Bay. He... He's going to shoot up, right? If Juju Smith-Schuster is out, Chase Claypool is going to shoot up. Marvin Jones Jr. at number 30 going up against Cincinnati. I expect Cincinnati to have a pretty big lead in this one. So look for some MJJ to score a touchdown. Tyler Boyd at number 31 in full PPR leagues. He's going to be a lot higher. In half PPR leagues, he might take a little bit of a bounce up if T. Higgins is out. At number 32, Brandon Cooks. Uh, Buffalo's a tough matchup. He's going to get tons of volume, but I don't think the ceiling is there this week. Nelson Aguilar at number 33. I already told you, right? Tampa Bay is allowing a lot of big plays right now, a lot of yards, a lot of touchdowns to opposing wide receivers. I expect I expect New England to be down basically all day on Sunday night. So because of that, Nelson Aguilar, I'm looking for a big play out of him. Uh, Richard Sherman has signed, but... Let's face it, Sherman's not going to walk off the street after not doing anything for a few months now and just be like, whoop, let's go. Sterling Shepard at number 34. Haven't heard much on his update yet, uh, other than the fact that he was a did not participate in practice. I don't know how close we're getting at this point. Got to continue to monitor that. If he does end up playing, he might bounce up a little bit. Uh, But talked about last week, New Orleans doing a pretty good job of, of taking the top off of things. So that will give him some good upside, like in the middle of the field. But we're looking at more probably like a 10 or, or a 10, 10 or 12 point game, a decent volume day, but not a lot of big plays. Kenny Galladay at number 35, got him right here next to Sterling Shepard. Again, don't know the status of Sterling Shepard yet. And, and we don't know about Darius Slayton either. Um, so we got to kind of wait and see where he settles in at Devonta Smith at number 36, Jalen hurts. Not a great week last week. Uh, J- Devonta Smith still saw a decent amount of targets. So for him, he's still going to be a start for me this week. We just, I think we just got to lower that floor a little bit. Cause I don't think that connection is fully there. I think there's some things Devonta Smith is still trying to perfect while he's in, you know, in the league now. And, uh, because of that, I think it's just, it's bringing his weekly upside down a little bit. Jalen Waddle at number 37, going to get up against Indy. Indianapolis. Indianapolis has had a tough time at times this year, stopping the pass. Jalen Waddle was targeted aggressively last week. He was kind of the go-to at the wide receiver position. Decent amount of targets. I expect the same against Indy. Michael Pittman Jr. at number 38. I'd like to have him a little bit higher, but the ceiling has just been limited so far. I, you know, I talked about him. Uh, I talked about him in the Start Sit video. I talked about him. I believe I, I brought his name up even on the waiver wire, even though he, he, he wasn't included in it, but I think I was talking about somebody else. But with Michael Pittman, the, the plays are there. The volume is there. The targets are there. The touchdowns haven't been yet. And that's what's really going to separate him from being like a low, like a, a high 30s, low 30s type of player to somewhere in the 20s. Like we got to start seeing those touchdowns. Corey Davis at number 39 going up against Tennessee, his former team. So maybe one revenge game. Number two, Tennessee hasn't done good at just stopping wide receivers this year. And number three, there's really no one else to throw to. So even if the upside is limited, you got to get this guy in your lineup this week. It's like a wide receiver three. You should see more than enough targets. Bobby Trees at number 40. Listen, listen, I've got him as a start this week, but I don't have him that high. Again, I can't faithfully put him up higher until I see it. But Arizona, again, Big plays behind them haven't happened much this season. So if they continue to kind of go with that, it's going to loosen up some of those areas that Robert Woods wins in, kind of in the intermediate section of the field. Cole Beasley at number 41. Teammate Emmanuel Sanders at number 43. It's kind of on touchdowns with me. If Emmanuel Sanders or Cole Beasley don't score, they both finish here. If either of them score, they finish a lot higher. Now, I'm not getting two touchdowns a week from Emmanuel Sanders by no re- by no means, but he has done a really good job at the big play, right? Cole Beasley, Stefan Diggs have been target monsters, but Emmanuel Sanders has actually had a lot more yards per reception than both of those guys. Tim Patrick going up against Baltimore. I think he is a really solid touchdown play this week. Marquise Brown at number 44. Now, I don't have Marquise Brown as a start this week. I am worried about that matchup for him, um, but we've got Bateman coming back soon, hopefully. Uh, you know, I think it leans a little bit more towards Sammy Watkins. I think both of these guys are going to be maybe right on that fringe 10 point line. The reason I put him in here is because I thought I would probably get a lot of questions about him considering Denver's matchups have been okay so far, but you know, not the best. So when you look at it, a lot of people I thought would say, well, you know, 
Marquise Brown. Let's go. So I've got him here because I think you're looking at kind of the upside here at number 44 this week. I'm not truly interested in playing him. Would have had a huge week last week against Detroit, but dropped some passes. Does that affect some things this week in the passing game and in the game plan going into? I would expect no, but I just feel like it might be Sammy Watkins week for them. Devontae Parker at number 45 again. With Jacoby Brissett, Devontae Parker still saw a decent amount of targets last week. I got him as a start. Robbie Anderson right here at number 46. Big plays, right? That's kind of what we're hoping to see from him. But I think it's Terrace Marshall Jr. that's a little bit safer. Robbie Anderson does have a little bit more on him here at number 46. Dallas has given up some big plays. So Robbie Anderson still coming in right here for me. DJ Chark Jr. at number 47 with Chark, 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 Chark. Chark. Hopefully this guy can find the end zone this week. The, I, I mean, that's really all that's happening for him right now. The receptions haven't been there. The targets haven't been there as much as we would have hoped. The yards aren't really there. We're looking for touchdown upside every single week. Christian Kirk at number 48, kind of waiting on DeAndre Hopkins at this point, okay? If Hopkins does play, I actually move Christian Kirk higher because then he doesn't need to worry about Jalen Ramsey because Jalen Ramsey is going to find DeAndre Hopkins. If DeAndre Hopkins is out, I actually think that hurts Christian Kirk. He might see a nice amount of volume and targets, but the production may not be there, which means the fantasy points wouldn't be there. That's what I'm worried about, especially since we've seen Jalen Ramsey slide into the slot, if that is truly where the best receiver is playing. Number 49, Brandon Ayuk out of the doghouse finally. Maybe, don't get too excited, but we definitely have him as a start. And Terrace Marshall Jr. just mentioned him a second ago when I was talking about Robbie Anderson. I think Terrace Marshall Jr. is a little bit better. Like him in the slot, like the potential volume for this week. So definitely feeling that matchup. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we got to jump over to the tight end position, right? We got to go top 20 tight ends. Travis Kelsey. Yeah, you know, you're playing Travis Kelsey every single week, baby. Doesn't matter. Darren Waller. I've got him as my prize picks over 70 receiving yards this week because I, I like it. I like the matchup. I think the Chargers are going to be really, really tough on the wide receivers for Las Vegas. That puts Darren Waller firmly in a great, great spot to see some of that volume you saw in week one. Rob Gronkowski at number three. If you don't think this dude is just going to go absolutely nuts against New England, you're kidding yourself. Only two guys I'm starting over him are Waller and Kelsey. And if you were to say, Kyle, I want to start him over Waller, I don't know if I would fully disagree with you either. George Kittle at number four. Finally, finally looking better last week. Let's hope he keeps it up. Kyle Pitts at number five. Yeah, disappointing so far this season. But again, rookie tight ends. We told you to be ready for this. If you drafted him, but on the flip side, the potential is there. So you can't give up on him. Okay. You just got to go through some of those headaches. TJ Hawkins are coming off a tough week, but he's going up against uh, Chicago. Another tough matchup again, but I still expect him to be that guy. Hopefully we can get him back to that target share of about 21% that he had a couple of weeks ago. Mark Andrews at number seven bounced back last week. This should be another good week for him. Noah Fan at number eight going up against Baltimore. Baltimore has allowed the most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. I would expect Noah Fant to have a really, really good week this week, especially with no KJ Hamler now. Really, you've got two guys at wide receiver that you can count on. Noah Fant's going to start getting more and more involved at this point. Tyler Higby at number nine told you during the start sit video, the upside just isn't there, but that's okay because the safety is. The dude hasn't dropped a pass yet this season, and he's only had one target that he hasn't caught because it was off target. Logan Thomas at number 10, Atlanta gives the most most touchdowns to opposing tight end. So I expect to see Logan Thomas bouncing around in the end zone this weekend. Mike Gusecki at number 11. Mike Gusecki was targeted like crazy by Jacoby Brissett last week. Let's look at that and see if that keeps up. Hunter Henry at number 12. Yeah, I've got num Hunter Henry pretty high this week because John New Smith, I think... I think they're getting a little frustrated with him, and Hunter Henry could really be that guy moving forward, especially going up against Tampa Bay. Evan Ingram uh, going up against New Orleans. I got him at 13 because, again, I don't know where the other guys stand. If Slayton and Shepard is out, Evan's going to stand right here. If they both end up being in, or Shepard ends up being in at least, we're going to bump them down a little bit. Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard right next to each other at 14 and 15. Really if one of them's a tight end one, it's because they scored a touchdown. But I mentioned it, 11 targets, nine receptions between the two last week. Uh, or was it six receptions? Might have been six receptions. Um, but anyway, decent yards, over 100 yards between the two. 
if they were one tight end, that'd be fantastic, but they're two. So if you're going to play one, you just got to be ready that the other one could do a little bit better. Juwan Johnson right now leads the New Orleans Saints in target, or excuse me, snaps out of the slot. And uh, not only that, but he's actually third on the team in targets right now. So listen, Juwan Johnson is getting some looks and he's running a route on 93% of their offensive snaps. This is a guy that they are trying to use as an offensive weapon. Going up against the Giants, hopefully they get to it. Dawson Knox at Houston. Can we go touchdown? In three straight weeks with Dawson Knox. I mean, you all watch his channel. You know I love me some Dawson Knox. It's just so hard to really have him any higher when you look at this Buffalo Bills team and you see all those great wide receivers there. Now, the fortunate news is that Josh Allen still throws it 40 times a game in a blowout, so that doesn't matter. Cole Komet at number 18. I'm, I'm worried about it this week, but still got him listed as a start. I have way too many starts this week for tight ends. Pat Fryermuth at number 19 coming out. I think he's got touchdown potential if Deontay Johnson and Juju are out. And then at number 20, Jordan Akins going up against Buffalo. Touch ma tough matchup for the wide receivers. I think they look towards Jordan Akins a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That is going to wrap it up for today's show. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're new here to the Fancy Headliners, you got to hit that subscribe button and stick around the rest of the season. Also, leave me a comment down below. Who is somebody that maybe you're a little higher on this week? Let me know and give me some good stats or something to back it up. I don't want to just hear, Kyle, that's a sucky ranking. Give it to me. Give it to me. Let me hear it. And as always, hit the like button. We greatly, greatly appreciate that. I'm going to get out of here. Good luck to everybody this week. I'll catch you on the live show. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Peace out. I'm a headliner.